Hello, this is my first look at Deepin OS 23 version. Uh, it's the release candidate version. I have looked at Deepin in the past, but I think it's been a few years. And um, I just remember it being a really polished desktop environment. It's a Chinese uh, distribution, and it also comes in English. So I've just installed it. One thing to note right out of the gate is that it takes 24, or it's a minimum of 64 gigabytes install requirements. So if you have like a flash storage device that's got like maybe 32 gigs of storage or something small, you probably won't be able to install this full version. So that's just something to uh, worth noting. So let's uh, take a look at this and I'll log in. I already created my user account. It had me do during the setup. So now that I'm logged in, the first thing I notice is, is the eye candy. It looks very, very polished. The taskbar, if you will, this area looks really very similar to Windows 11 as far as the centered layout and, you know, maybe a little bit, not not too much, but I like these, uh, these different color icons on the right here for the notification area. I think that's really nice. It's a nice touch. And I like these little virtual desktop workspaces. This is, uh, oh, they actually have their own wallpaper. That is really sweet. So very cool. Uh, it's got a clipboard manager right here. And we got the launch pad, which is, wow, looks very much like, kind of like a Windows 7-esque, uh, maybe Windows 11 kind of feel. But um, let's just kind of browse around and see what we got. Um, you can see that it start out with a video. And if you click play, I don't know if it's gonna play the sound on here, but I'm hearing it in my headphones. <laughs> We'll just click next and it gives you a choice to align left or align center. I like that. I, I like to align left. So let's click that effect mode. Okay. Let's keep that. That sounds kind of cool. Wow. This is really polished. Um, you got choose an icon theme. We'll just keep the default bloom and here we are. We're ready to go. So let's hover over each icon that they've default included here on the taskbar just to see what they as important enough to put there as a favorite. So we got the control center, very cool. Calculator, let's open up the calculator app. Everything's really snappy. Text editor, let's check that out. Everything pops pretty good too, like a lot of contrast between the buttons. You got music, we got calendar. Let's open up calendar, see what we got. Is it is it Thunderbird? I don't know. Is it a custom app? Let's see what happens when I, I think I clicked it. There it goes. Oh, really cool, really cool. Let's go to the manage, see what they got, what kind of options it's got. Account, sign in, what kind of accounts can you sign in with with your calendar? Is it Nextcloud? I'm not sure, I'm gonna see what they, so it's got a deep in ID. Okay, I'm not familiar with that, so I probably wouldn't create an account right off the right off the bat, but that's really cool that they have their own thing going on here. That's kind of cool. I'd like to research that a little bit more before I sign up. And let me close that. And let's go back here. We got a browser. Let's see what browser this default icon takes us to. Is it going to be Firefox or is it going to be the deep, uh, deepened browser that's maybe a modified version of Mozilla Firefox? I don't know. Let's see what we got. It looks Chromium based. So we go here and we go to settings. This is definitely a Chrome. Yep, it's Chrome. So this is a Chrome browser. Okay, cool. Does it does it support sign in? Um, let's see, sign in to sync your data. Yes, it does. Okay, so it's a it's a Chrome Chromium based browser. Cool. I could go ahead and install Brave or Firefox if I wanted to. And let's go to the next icon, the App Store. check it out very cool VLC shows up it's like they read my mind uh, of course I got VLC that I could go ahead and install let's close that we'll mess with that later multitasking view let's click that and see and there's those desktops with the different wallpaper the workspaces I think that's really cool that's a nice touch kind of separates what you're working on a little bit more than just one two three four you know it's got a, it's got a wallpaper for each one I like that and, and you can also click it right here. So I feel like I wouldn't need this icon if I just wanted to switch between them and I was comfortable just going to one, two, three, or four. Like I could right click on this and, and remove it maybe. Um, 
position, let's see, status, dock settings, alignment. Can you remove it? Let's see. Can you remove any of these? Dock settings, keep hidden. Let's try that. Oh, so that's just the dock. Okay, obviously. Dock settings, status, keep shown. Okay. So let's right click on another one of these icons. Alignment. So this is just for the bar itself. So these are, these very much lock in here. So I kind of like that, but I wanted to know how, how I can change it. Let's go to dock settings and see if it's got options to remove things. It's taken a bit here to load up unless I clicked it wrong. There it goes. Okay. So personalization. There we go. These are, these are for the dock settings. I don't see a dock layout setting. And now I'm probably looking right at it, aren't I? I mean, I, don't, I'm, I could be doing that right now. This is my first time, of course. So <laughs> please be easy on me. Default applications, web page. Okay, so yeah. I'm not going to mess with this now and waste your time, but I, I'm assuming there's a way to do it. It's Linux, so there's got to be a way to, to remove your icons that you don't want on here. So, like, if you right-click on it... Oh, there's undock for the browser one. So, okay, so it's just undock, apparently. Did I miss that on all these? No. So, the dock settings button seems to be, like, anchored here. But file manager, I can undock that. Okay, cool. That's that's fair. So, that's something, the multitasking view, and I have to see if that's a setting we could turn off. So, very interesting. And please forgive me for not full-screening this right out of, right out of the... Uh, gate because I just kind of left this at a small resolution. Let's go to display settings and see if we can turn it to 1080 P. <laughs> it's taking a little bit to load here. I've noticed that there's a little couple little delays. All right, displays. So we're at this. We're going to go to 1920 by 1080. And that should fix the issue. Maybe things will load faster too now that I'm at the right resolution. I don't know. <laughs> So let's go and check out what programs we have on the launch pad. I really like this launch pad menu. It looks really sweet. Uh, we got the browser. We got all your, you know, quick ones right here that you can go to. But we could also go to frequently used. But there's also, it looks like there's breakdowns right here to go to your file explorer quickly. Yes. Okay. That's cool. I say cool a lot. It's, I don't know. I, I must just think I'm so hip using that word. Let's let's click this expanding little arrow and see if that brings it to a full menu. Wow, so cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's just do a quick little run through of all these. We got browser, file manager, app store, music, movie. Let's see what movie is, what kind of movie player it's using. I like that they give you the option to install VLC right in the app store though, because that's like the first thing I would do. <laughs> Decoding. I mean, maybe this one is good. I don't know. Let's go to about. I mean, they got their their branding on everything. This is really impressive that they kind of like have their own thing going. Movie is a full featured video player supporting playing local and streaming media in multiple video formats. Very cool. Okay, let's go back to the launch pad. And I like that it stays the way that I clicked it. So I, when I click to expand it, I went back to it now and it still is in expanded mode, but now I could click this arrow up at the top right to bring it back to the small menu. And that's really neat. So let's go look at what else we have. Let's go back to here and just scroll down all the way. We've got calendar, keyboard layout, cooperation. What is that? DDE cooperation. Keyboard and mouse sharing when a connection is made between two devices and shares keyboard. This is some kind of remote desktop software. I'm not going to mess with that. But that's really interesting that they have their own thing going on here. ChinaUOS.com slash resource slash assistant. Collaborative applications on the UOS can be... This is... I, I really would have to learn a lot more about this, but this is really interesting that there's so many different tools that I've never heard of. And it's got my local IP address so I could connect to this on my, on my network, apparently. Okay. Interesting. Let's scroll back down to the bottom. We got cooperation. We got Lian Lian Khan. That's some kind of game. Let's try it out. Oh, it's like a matching game, I guess. 
Okay, let's close that. I'm not going to play that right now, but then we'll scroll back down to the bottom. We got Gomoku, Camera, Welcome, Disk Utility, Package Installer, Archive Manager, Font Manager, Calculator, Print Manager, Log Viewer. There's a lot here to keep you busy. This is this is I see why it takes 64 gigabytes of install right out of the uh, gate. It it takes <laughs> it takes quite a bit of storage. I, I I when I made this virtual machine. I originally gave it like 25 megs and it's like you need 64 megabytes of or gigabytes of space. I'm like, what? But maybe they just want you to be safe and, you know, have room to, to, to install some things, maybe back up your data. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason for that, but that's unusually large for most Linux distributions. Usually with 20, 25 gigs, I can install it. No problem uh, for a Linux distribution. So I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I could use this as, as a daily driver, not because it's a release candidate, but just because I'd have to learn more about the the organization behind this and why all these uh, accounts are are encouraged to be created. It's almost like reminds me of creating a Microsoft account. But all in all, I think it's a really awesome operating system, and I think what they're doing is 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 awesome because they have their own versions of the software on here, and and it's just that's impressive when somebody does that. Like it's, it reminds me of Linux Mint where they have like Warpinator and their own software that they write and they're just contributing a lot to the Linux community. So this desktop environment I believe is used on other distributions here and there. So it's something that's available and it's helped the community. So I hope this was informative and maybe you'll try, try this out. Maybe it's something you like, maybe not, but this is my quick review of Deepin 23 release candidate. Thank you.